And tonight on Sidious Mag Live, we are talking Josh Kerr, Jakob Ingebrigtsen, Marlady Paulino, Karsten Warholm, Rye Benjamin, Nina Kennedy, Katie Moon, and now your hosts, Chris Chavez, Kyle Merber, and David Melly. Our e6. Mic. Sound mind, sound body. 365 days. One year until history is made. A lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test. 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind and a sound body can do. See you in Paris. Stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tide legs? You'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it with stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keano 30 Shoe. All right, it is day five of the World Athletics Championships, Sidious Mag live with our post-race analysis presented by ASICS. We've got a group run tomorrow morning. It's been really cool to tap into the Budapest running community in addition to just all the fans coming from all around the world. Uh, the cool uh, We shout out like, hey, where's everyone coming from? We had Canada, we had... Uh, France, we had uh, Czech everywhere. Republic, Czech Republic, Australia, um, Ireland. Yeah, it was a very diverse crowd. Mm -hmm. So really looking forward to that. The ASICS hospitality suite has been amazing. Uh, we've been rocking ASICS gear nonstop for the last couple days. I got a lot. You were next to me. I got a lot of compliments you on did. this Onitsuka Tiger uh, shirt. So <laughs> get, get your I own. I can confirm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know it's. Uh, we are really happy with our partnership with ASICS and all of their support. Uh, David was just kind of joking before. Us. David Melly's on the show tonight. David Melly just. I'm here. All the I way made from it. the United States for this. How is David here with a the help of ASICS? I scooted here with my ASICS shoes. <laughs> yeah. Feet picks for the fans. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, 
Can we talk about the 1500? Of course we can. Oh my God. I'm moving to Scotland. Like that is, that's my takeaway from the last two years of 1500. You, you don't have to move. You, I think you, you should be a remote been, fan. You could have yeah. been born there and then you would have been good at the 1500. Yeah, in like 15 years, I'm going <laughs> to win worlds in the 1500. You're not supposed to cheer that much in the media section, but they were, we weren't the only ones. We, there was mind. a lot of cheering going on. And I think a lot of that stems from the fact that this was just like, you know, a very intriguing race. I think like last year, you know, for the same reasons, people were expecting Jakob to win gold. And this year there's been a whole bunch of talk. I mean, I just go back to the interview that he did with Sidious back in at the Oslo Diamond League. And it was just sort of like, what are your expectations? Are you looking forward to, uh, you know, facing off against uh you know, Jake Whiteman, and it was, he didn't say Jake's name at all, he was just like, I'm looking forward to taking down everybody, and so, you know, through the rounds, the showboating, he made this thing super interesting, and, but I don't think it was ever really all that much of a lock, I mean, this is the part where you can probably, like, <laughs> I actually never thought he would win, <laughs> you know, like, the part where you don't can, like, play back super any. cut, like, <laughs> oh, the past couple episodes, we were like, who's a bigger lock, Faith or Jakob, and it's kind of clear now, uh, it was always <laughs> fake. Um, but, all right, we were watching the whole race together and just losing our minds, but it was Josh Kerr who ends up denying Jakob Bingo Britson of the gold medal this year by running basically the same exact final 300 meters as Jake Whiteman. This was a three-part race combined of all races we had already seen before. Mm -hmm. First part, Abel Kip saying takes it out. And tries to control it in the beginning, slows it down a little. That only lasts like 200 meters? Five, no, 500 meters in, Jakob takes over. Jakob takes the lead and is going to try to grind everyone down. And he's doing the Jakob thing. An important stat is that Jakob has won 16 out of 16 races since losing last year's world championships. Like he is so dominant since that loss. That it just kind of was like, all right, and here Jakob goes, and he's going to do Jakob things. But I'm curious, how many times has Josh Kerr watched that Jake Whiteman win last year? Because he did exactly the same thing at 200 meters to go, doing a move that I thought was way too hard. It looked like he really just like sent it all at once, trying to beat him to the turn. And he actually never got fully around him on the turn. He was held off on the outside the entire time. And I was convinced he, he just moved way too hard. Josh was straining in his face. You know, if you took the sunglasses off, his eyes were squinty and hurting. But Jakob was hurting too. And in the last, I think, 75 meters, it was like, oh, this is happening. This is happening. And Josh Kirk just had, I, I don't think the fastest 100 of the race was the last one. I'd imagine from 200 to 100 left. But he, God damn it, did he fight for it. Yeah. So the question I have for you then, Kyle, is did Josh win this race or did Jacob lose it? That's exactly how it would be framed like on like an ESPN bottom line. And I think the answer is Josh won this race. I think Josh, I mean, it's not like Jakob fell down. It's not like Jakob, he even said in a post-race interview, the race went perfectly to plan. Like that's, he executed every aspect of the race except the very last and most important part. So they ran 329. You know, it's not like it was a slow freak of nature tactical race you know it's not like josh beat him by you know, four seconds or something like that so it, it really does you know josh kurt master of peaking at the right time because that guy was well beaten at whatever whatever diamond league it was where everybody ran sub 330 Mac, what was the the line that you had it was he had only raced twice this whole season no he had only raced um two two, two 1500s before world ninth and then third yes it was at oslo and then in lausanne and in lausanne his in oslo that 330 got him it was so far down the results so he's been kind of like flying under the radar but you know if we learned anything from the last couple of years of josh's race schedule is that it's always very meticulously planned with danny it was so cool it's so just cool. and uh, like jakob I have to give Jakob some credit, and I'll, I'll admit, 
I was rooting against him. And the, I always go back to the Vince McMahon. What's the most interesting thing that could happen? What would If the producers behind the scenes, it was Jakob losing. That's the most interesting thing that could happen, right? And let alone the fact that Josh is a friend of Sidious. He's a regular on shows and, you know, we raced him in college. So we know Josh, so we're rooting for him. It's not like it was just anyone beating Jakob. It was someone that we know. Higher likelihood of getting Josh on our <laughs> Sidious Mag Live than most people. And so, you know, it wasn't only just rooting against Jakob. It was rooting for Josh. But I have to give so much credit to Jakob for making this year and this race so interesting. So even though it was, I was admittedly rooting against him because it's interesting, he talked his talk all year and made every fan so invested in how this would play out. And look, like, you could obviously take the, the stance like, oh, like, I guess you shouldn't talk shit. <laughs> like, look what happened. Talk shit, get hit. But instead, it's like, no, talk shit, make the sport so fun to watch. Everyone cares about everything that you do. We're obsessed with you. Like, we <laughs> you, you can't root for Rocky without Drago. Like, that is, that's the essence of a hero villain narrative, you know. And, it's, and not that even Jakob is the villain, you know. I think he's an incredibly exciting person to root for, you know, going after the all-time list in the 1500. Um, frankly, the fact that now... He hasn't won a world title for so long. In the 1500. In the 1500. You know, especially if he wins in Paris next year, it's like, all right, dude, what is it with worlds? You've got two <laughs> Olympic golds, but worlds is your number for some reason. You know, that almost makes, you know, you root for him in 2025. And just to say that Josh Curry also isn't one to shy away from talking shit. Oh, yeah. Like he loves his, you know, he loves his talk too. And I think uh, at indoors when we talked about Milrose, he was talking about this race and how it was his to lose. Yeah. That's how he framed it in his mind. So I think those two come down the last home stretch. I thought it was awesome. Um, with 120 to go, Josh was kind of cutting in a little bit. He wasn't impeding by any means, but Jakob actually, yeah. like, Jakob actually would told him to like move or try to move him. And yesterday we talked about trying to get into Faith Kipiegon's space just to try to do something to disrupt her race plan. And that's exactly what Josh did to Jakob today with, you know, and it's disrupted his last 120, got, you know, into his space and, you know, you saw him pull away and win. It was incredible. If Jakob has one weakness, it's that he doesn't respond great to pressure. He's never, <laughs> seriously. That's a bolt. I mean, I, if, like he's like never, if he's business. never pressure, you know, pressure in the race, you know, not like the pressure of circumstances. If he's, his best races all come in circumstances where he is racing his ex, his race plan exactly as designed he's executing he is completely comfortable on head and shoulders above the rest of the field and the times when we have seen him crack have been those moments where somebody gets on his shoulder and you know is breathing in his ear and that's that's when Jakob is you know mortal and it's interesting to you know think about he's done you know we've talked a lot in the preview and everything about the training he's done to improve his final 100 meters but it seems like there's almost kind of a a, a mental component of this too for him of how do you respond the moment when things go from sort of like an A plus to an A minus and how do you keep that from going from like an A minus to a F? Well, and then it's one thing in the microcosm of a single race, but what about now in a career? Now, how do you respond to the fact that he just lost this race coming out in the 5k and then does he become someone like that we start to root for soon. Like if he, I think the if he loses, arc? if he loses, I'm rooting one for more, him in 2025. <laughs> like, like, if he loses one more major championship, then the tide completely turns and it, like it goes. As from, Americans, we want to beat the Brits. Yeah, so now we're going to turn to Jakob. We will turn on Josh real now. <laughs> but the, but then all of a sudden it does turn and. That again, an interesting storyline. If you, this is his third world championship in a row that he has come in second in a 1500, including indoors. So two outdoors and indoors. So if he goes to another world championship, God forbid doesn't win that one. Like then yes, we are rooting for him hard come Tokyo. I really hope that he um, doesn't uh, shy away from, from these record attempts that he was doing earlier this year. Like that was so special to watch and, and he raced so many diamond leagues in so many different countries and that was so entertaining for the majority of the season. And I just like, I fear that him losing these major championships is going to uh, like just influence him to maybe not do as many of those. He raced and a that lot. Sucks because he's he's such a good star in the sport. Or if he wins 
5K is he? a couple of days, does he say, fuck it? <laughs> 1,500 <laughs> is not for me, I, you know? I, he, he has made it clear he wants this thing. Um, I don't think he's going to stop until at least he has the gold medal. And that makes um, it fun, you know? I mean, again, to compare him to Faith Kipiegan, like, what does she have left to accomplish in the 1500? Steep. Not much. Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's bring it on. 400 hurdles. She can do it. But, you know, Jakob, the answer to that question is really clear. He has the world record. He has the world title. You know, he has these things that he still has to complete in his career. And when you're 22, it's nice to not check everything off the list right is away. true? He's still only he's 22. 22. <laughs> He's 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 old in the field to, with Neil Laros in the mix as well. He was Neil Laros was pushing for a medal today. He was tenth, I think. Uh, yeah. Before we run this thing into the ground, Nordis almost got him almost. at the line. Yeah. Which I, like track and field script writers out there, like I wish <laughs> you would have you know drafted that one up because so for the people listening who may not have the full context, Nordis is coached by Jakob's father and. You know, there's a whole lot to unpack there. I don't think the relationship is all that great. Um, Allegedly. So, like, I think uh, it was, it, Nordis was closing so hard that he had his eyes on Jakob. And Jakob, if this race was five meters longer, Nordis would have got silver. And to their credit, like, what, like 10 people live in Norway and they picked up <laughs> two golds and a silver tonight? You know, that's a that's pretty impressive performance as, as a nation. Uh, Mac, I just sent you a clip. I, I don't know if you can pull it up, but uh, back in February, we had only one guest on our Miller Rose Games post-race show this year, and it was Josh Kerr. And I remember I asked him sort of like, why is it that uh, people should root for you this year? Obviously, like, there's going to be, a, you know, I, I, at this point, I'm revising the question, but it was like, you know, there's so many other people in this event, and it's so deep. Why should they root for you? And here's what he had to this say. This is my question. You know, uh, you can see from today, I've been working on my weaknesses. I've been working extremely hard. I've been in every major final since 2019. It's my time. You know, I've been, I've been in the sport since I was nine years old, and uh, I've had an incredible support staff around me. I've got an incredible brand behind me an honest, hardworking boy that's just looking for, for a world championship gold medal. So, you know, if you want to you wanna have a fun ride as someone who wants to have, you know, enjoyable races and race some of the best in the world, then jump on the hype train a little, a little bit. Uh, so he warned us that he was like, it was, it's my time. He told us this back in February. Maybe we should have listened a little bit closer. There's also another clip where he says, with Brooks on my feet, Oakley's on my <laughs> eyes. And, and an Ollie pop, pop in, in his hand. hand. There's nothing I can't do. And so uh, <laughs> now I think we might need to get Ollie pop on the phone for, for Josh. But uh, in, just an incredible race. 329. Season's best. I mean, he knew he was like, it's going to take my best. Uh, he was probably expecting to run a PR. He had, hasn't run one since the, uh, the Tokyo, uh, the Tokyo Olympics. No. Yeah. Right. Since the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, no, that's, I believe the second fastest. So some other shout outs. Abel Kipsang had a great race to hold on. Fourth. I mean, yeah. he, he really raw talent a couple of years ago. He had run fast really early in the season and, you know, come out fourth, mix it up, almost grab that medal. Good run for him. Wait. But, I want to kind of change up this format real quick. Can we just give everyone a grade, a letter grade from A to <laughs> F? Everyone? Like, <laughs> how about we do the Americans? Because <laughs> Yara right. Nagus, fifth place, first world championship, tying the OAC high finish so far this championships, like Jordy. And Yara Nagus, what do we think of this? What grade are you giving that? A. I'm, I'm giving him a B plus. A minus. I, I think I think a medal was really realistic for him um, going into this final, and so you know I think it's a testament to how quickly he's raised the bar so high for himself that you know in his first Team USA appearance, we're like, "Yard, where's the medal, man?" You know, and he looked fantastic for you know I would say about like thirteen hundred meters of that race. Well, I was, was sitting next to Mac watching it, and we were just clocking him the entire time. He had great tactics, great positioning, and I think he just didn't have that sort of like extra 1% of 1%, you know, he raced a good amount this indoor season. It's a, it's been a long year. Um, and, you know, again, not to take anything away from what an accomplishment fifth place is in your first world championships appearance, but you know, it's certainly, it's exciting for American fans of track and field that there's a guy in this mix who's going to be in this mix, hopefully for a long time, who's 
always going to be a metal threat. I'm giving him an A for the year, but I, I'm kind of on board with you for that like B, B plus for this race here, only because he clearly is capable of meddling. And if Josh can win, Yared can win, mm -hmm. right? Like the thing about Yared this year that's just been incredible, it, he doesn't seem to miss, right? Like he always has pretty solid days at this point. He's really consistent. I give that to his temperament. Yeah. <laughs> he does not seem like this rattle. Like even the biggest stage does not did rattle you, him. Did at you all. see the intro videos they made them do? What was Yarrett? <laughs> he was doing like a goofy dance. <laughs> figure, figure I just I wish there was audio on it so I could hear the director in the background being like, "All right, Yarrett, like now dance. Now give him the <laughs> finger guns." Like, <laughs> it was. It was I, incredible. I get in trouble for busting out the finger guns at parties. Um, <laughs> all right, so Mario was sixth. His teammate just behind him. Cole Hawker, seventh place. What a wild trajectory. Personal best, 330. Hadn't run until April. He was dealing with a double Achilles injury. Um, was working his way. He opened up at Portland Track Festival, I think it was, or Stumptown, one of the, the meets out there, and ran 334. There were good signs and that he was trending in the right direction, but massive step forward for him. I think he's got to look at what Yard's done this year, you know, as another guy who super talented, got hurt a lot the past couple of years. You know, the biggest barrier for, for Yard over the past couple of years was just not being able to get that kind of consistent, have, you know, high level training. And if I'm Cole, I'm looking at him thinking like, this is my goal, you know, here on out is just like friggin' stay healthy and the rest will come because clearly the, the talent and the, the tools are there and it's just a matter of time. I'm, I'm giving so much appreciation to Cole's just whole year, the way he's responded. I mean, think about his coach was at Oregon. Ben decides to stay in Eugene, train him. He loses his number one training partner and friend <laughs> to and so well, i hope he, they're still friends no i know but the, on a day-to-day -day basis like that was the guy like everything that they did in training you know presumably was together loses him gets hurt somehow finds a way to work his way back to finishing seventh and running a personal best this season there was a million reasons also the fact that ben is now going back to virginia tech yeah so cole said he's undecided right now so like he's gonna stick with ben as his coach through 2024 the options there for him to potentially stay in Eugene and get coached remotely, but he's not ruling out also moving. He's going to take the time. To so that decide. uncertainty like is floating around when your coach just <laughs> accepted a job on the other side of the country. And it's hard to, you know, remember because he's similar to Jakob, you know, he's been around for a couple of years now. He's still only like, tw like 22, 21, something like that. Yeah. He's pretty young. So it's, you know, as you grow as a athlete and as a person, you know, just have being able to manage all the, you know, roller coaster of life things that comes at you, like you were saying, is is something that, you know, under the best of circumstances is tough to do when you're that age, let alone when you're also trying to perform at, you know, the highest level athletically. I think Cole's looking at this going one and a half seconds to first. Like he has to be so happy about that given his year. I mean I would I, I don't yeah. know everyone's year. I know a lot of these guys had good, solid training years. He may have had the worst. And he's one and a half seconds away in a fast race from first place. He, he has to he has to be looking forward for and, next year. And psychologically too, you know, I'll I'll do credit to you know Josh and and Jake. But if I'm Cole or Yared, I'm like I'm just as good as those guys. Like if they can beat Jake Jakob, I can beat him. Like it's it certainly you know has to live you know, a little bit in the back of the mind of all these kind of, you know, 329, 330, talented 1500 guys that, you know, if someone can do it, why can't you be the guy that does it next year? So, so before jumping on to other events, because we do have other events in track and field besides the men's 1500, believe it or not, uh, who's the favorite for the Olympics? <laughs> uh, I think... <laughs> Say it, Mac. <laughs> Say it, you Say coward. It chest. <laughs> Own it. It's Josh. It has to be Josh. I, I think Josh has it figured out. He's he's uh, bronze two years ago. I think last, last year he had COVID. Too. Last year he was. I think he knew what was wrong last year and then just corrected it and made it right. He was healthy this year. It was a really deliberate season. Comes away with the gold, you know. So, and they they have the race plan and the beasts right now are clicking on. They're crushing right now. Everyone's crushing right now on that team. 
I think there's not a favorite, which is the, where you want it to be. You know, it's boring when races have a big favorite that, you know, a, a creates this sense of predetermined outcome for the, these events. You know, I think if Jakob had just completely walked away with this thing, it would have made Paris a little bit less exciting. So I think the fact that, you know, no, presumably nobody's going to have, you know, massive negative odds going into Paris next year is, is great for the event. Ollie Hoare? No. No one's beat Jake Whiteman in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is there parties happening right now in the streets of uh, Scotland? Well, I mean, it might be Neil Gourley's turn next year. No, uh, it's still it's like, like it's still like forty three degrees plan. in Scotland. They can't they can't go outside. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else stand out to you from this race? I just uh, I have one takeaway. World Indoors is in Glasgow next year. If you're Scottish watching sweet. Scottish one, yeah, two, Scottish three, baby. But if you're just watching the world championships and you're like, that looks really fun. I'm just going to keep saying like these meets, everyone's vacation in track world should just be, where's the next global championship. And again, if you live in Scotland, indoors is a selling point. In and of <laughs> you don't have to go out. <laughs> Uh, just kind of, I like how interactive these shows can be because we're live on YouTube and it's going to be turned over as a podcast. There's a afterwards. bunch of angry Scottish <laughs> fans. <laughs> you know, it's like there's people debating right now, just sort of like, and I, I'd love to hear Mac and Kyle's take on this stuff about, you know, the commonalities that Josh and Jake have, where it's like they have the stronger 800 meter background than Jakob. Yeah, they're two guys who come. It's, it's 815 guys versus a. 15 5k special but both of them have become very successful in the 3k if you remember last year jake made it part of his indoor season to run some 3ks and he ended up running great in staten island for the, the indoor grand prix and then this year a lot of people not named kyle wouldn't have thought but i did and i i knew that josh had a great chance to win at milrose and what did he do he went out and beat a great field there and so these guys do have that background of being 800 runners but just the way that every single global championship keeps going so fast let alone with three rounds being as fast as they are you just have to have the strength like it, you you're not going to get a true 800 1500 guy winning a medal without being able to go 332 330 under 330 like it's just that's how it's going to be run do you want to take your victory lap about him running that half marathon yeah half honestly, marathon or josh yeah, that's, that's, that's where it's like no it's not an 815 guy josh Kerr is a half marathon yeah. <laughs> he dropped down in distance um all right what do we move on to now oh the men's 400 hurdles all right. We're just doing finals. Are we talking? Is pre-runs? anyone from Norway still in this chat? Jasmine, come on nice. over. We're bringing on Jasmine Todd to help us out with some of the sprint action. Jasmine, hey how was your night at the stadium? You know, it was actually pretty cool. We were in the area with all the Norwegians, actually. So oh. it, was, it was Solomon and happy. It was pretty eccentric over there that's a good word to use they were lit they were better than what they were for the semi-final because remember i was like i was sitting by all of them and they were just kind of calm cool collected relaxed but today no they did the dang thing they had all their flags going they were excited and i was like thank goodness but Karsten had the slowest start. He had the slowest reaction time out of everybody. Yeah, I, I kind of noticed it from the beginning because I pointed out to you that, like, right from the gun, it was Rai had a lead for the first half of the race. Yeah, that man fought. Okay, I'm so proud of Rai. Um, Rai comes out with bronze, and that man, I mean, he's gone through so I, I don't know. Like, does he just attract COVID and injuries? Like, I need him to not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's been missing for most of ye- most of the year. Yeah. And to come out with the bronze, it should have him feeling pretty good, hopefully with a healthier year going into the Olympic year. Yeah, him just trying to hold on for dear life in the final two hurdles was it was a little painful to watch, but I like I was yeah. like, all right, at least it's still a medal that he has to show for him this whole Is it crazy to suggest don't hold me, I don't want like but should he just move to the flat four? 
if he's having injury issues and things are happening, he has one of the fastest flat 400 times of the season, uh, like in the whole he, he country, does. like right sure. now. And he did it once. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it just depends. It depends on what's causing the injury because it might not be hurdles. It could just be simply how he's recovering. He could still get those same injuries, possibly running the 400. So if it's something that has to do with hurdles, I would not be mad at him coming down to the open four. I mean, we just watched Sydney do it. I think that it would be kind of fun. Where's there more glory in the 400 hurdles or the 400? Ooh. I feel like until a couple of years ago, nobody cared about the 400 hurdles. And they now didn't. it's like the sexiest event in track and field. I do think, you know, I, I just can't get how good he looked running 46.5 at USA is out of my head. And I think, you know, as much as I want to see you know, him succeed and be happy and healthy. And that's, you know, a, a, a victory in and of itself at the same time. I, I just like so fully believe that that 46, five rye with a couple more healthy months of training is a 45, five rye. And I, I think that just like lives run free in the back of your head. When you think about potentially changing events is knowing, knowing that the, you know, the world record potential is it's there. Much closer yeah. in the 400 hurdles than potentially the, the flat 400. Is that 400 hurdles world record just from Karsten make it interesting? Like, it, I'm just watching the clock every time Karsten runs, and I just want to see him go under 45.94 again. And so Karsten, I, I don't know. Like it, It's kind of it was a blessing and a curse how great that race was because now that's almost my expectation every time that he's out is that we're going to see those sort of fireworks again. It's the Femke Bowl course where you're like, oh, she ran 52, snooze. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, showed us, you showed us a whole new world. You showed us, we didn't, show know. us more. <laughs> like, we didn't know you could go that like fast, and now I want more of it. I'm addicted. I mean, he was in a league of his own today mm -hmm. despite his slower reaction time, and we have to remember that he was also previously injured before coming into this year. So... I think that once, now that he's back and he's getting back into that rhythm, I think we might see it coming into that Olympic year. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it's just like Rye is so, in, in a sense, like it's, his body's delicate. Like to get into this form and peak for the championships, like it takes a lot of care. He didn't do Monaco to prepare for this meet. And it's sort of like it, now you've got me thinking, it's like what could he split on the four by four? And it's like we might not get to find out because, like, I'm sure this was taxing on his body. Um, and if you even take that another step further, like, can Rye Benjamin beat the likes of Vernon Orwood or Bryce Deadman? I'm kind of nodding my head. I mean, yes. I put him at third leg. He has time to kind of rest, recover. Um, they've got great medical staff over there. I'm sure he has his own team that he's probably brought with him. I think if he can sit back, rest, recover, if they put him at third leg, I think he'd smash it. Before we start talking relays, though, I just want to point out, you know, talking about the excitement of the 400 hurdles. Rye's the only guy over the last two years that was on the podium both years. There's five different medalists. Three and years. Three, three straight years. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I'm just saying in terms of where the hurdles are right now, you know, you have... Dos Santos, Karsten, Rye. Dos Santos is fifth today. Now you have Kyron McMaster entering the chat. You have Trevor Bassett, who medaled last year. And you've got this kid from Jamaica who just set the world junior record. Like or Sean Clark. Yeah. What an exciting time for this event that it's no longer a three-man conversation the way we sort of thought it was in Tokyo. We're like, oh, all right, for the next five championships, it's just going to be. That's what's know. been making it fun. Like it kind of. Like you said, I'm enjoying the fact of not knowing who is going to win the event, and there's just so much talent within it. Kind of like how the 100 was. We didn't know who was going to win the 100, and we were super excited to see that. So I think that now seeing how the 400 hurdles is starting to develop and these times are starting to drop in both the men and the women, oh, gosh. Carson's just going to have to start working a little bit harder. Get back <laughs> down. Get back down to that 45. It's interesting man. looking at the times of the final versus the semi because mm -hmm. in the final, it's kind of like you just go balls to the wall and like hold on for dear <laughs> life until you fall apart. Whereas like, you know, in the semis, everyone's just, ah, I'll just run smooth and beat the guys next to me. And it's almost like by trying to do too much, a lot of people fall apart. Yeah. Both I did. Rye and Carson ran faster in the semis than they did today. I was thinking they did hold them a really long time um, between like 
from when they ran out of the yes. tunnel to when the race went off. I mean, again, it's 90 degrees out, so, like, how cold can you get? But, like, <laughs> you know, I, I did think that when I saw those times click up and, like, oh, you know, they're running 47s, not 46 mids for the for the podium, I did wonder, you know, sort of, like, how much of that was just, like, a little bit of whatever that, the funk in the schedule. That was my that, thought more for the pole vultures that had to wait for yeah. – each of those events to go off because they would stop them from competing and they would have to wait for the start of the track event before they could go again. They'd close the runway. Give us that breakdown of that pole vault. I mean, we have a tie. What do you mean? A tie. A tie. Okay. First of all, I don't know how I feel about tying for I'm gold. Out. I'm like, Tara literally texted me and she was like, so if you were in that position, are you doing a jump off? Or are you settling for a tie? And I'm like, as cool as, a gold medal sounds sharing a gold medal does not sound that fun. No, like the, the, somebody ha has to get silver. You're then holding the, the bonus money in your hand. Are you willing to risk it for $0? You get zero additional. It's not like <laughs> 25 shots, yeah, half like, court. <laughs> like, like the, the, I'm talking like, Hey, uh, here's hundreds of thousands of dollars for $0. Do you want to potentially get a fraction of that? Just for a little pride, like, of course they're both taking the, the money and running. As fans, I thought it was, and we were talking about this the other day, beautiful moment during the Olympics. Yes. <laughs> yes. Marcin yes. and <laughs> John Margo did it. That, that was, was beautiful. so Olympic. It's, yeah. it's I feel Olympic. like that was the one time where I was like, oh, sharing gold. This yeah. is cute. I don't know why for this pole vault competition, I was just like, no, they should have jumped off World champs, Seb Co should have walked out. <laughs> Vince McMahon <laughs> would have walked out and been like, you two have to fight. Like, like fight it. Y'all well, need to fight it out. No, not in like pole vault. Like, you have to fight. Like, oh, just actual like <laughs> arm brawl. wrestle. I don't know. Like we got to figure this out. I think I'd like to see an arm wrestle between them. Yeah, but like I think world <laughs> champs, we have winners and losers. Olympics, we're allowed to tie. The, the <laughs> other thing that sucks is that, uh, and I'm far from the expert on this, so maybe I'll be wrong and correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but the way you do a jump off in the vertical jumps is you start at the height and you go down until someone makes it, which is just like the <laughs> shittiest way to end your competition. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. Whereas like if it were the long jump, for example, like it, if it was just like sudden death, you get one jump, yeah, longer person just wins. Be one like jump. that, like who's farthest that that's fine but with me. You have to go at the same time. Okay. Yeah. This is, a, this is but <laughs> start, I think part of it is like, you've just been competing for so long. You're so like, especially in the pole vault, like, Body Those competitions tired. take a really long time, and the higher you go, the more jumps you have to take. And I think also in that moment, just the thought of like, we're just gonna keep jumping. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> I want going. a beer. <laughs> I, I just we're gonna go it. celebrate. I, I have the solution. So Events, what we do, we, we go we like get. wheel of fortune type thing, in which you don't know everyone else's bid, and we give it to the like who's ever the lowest but correct sort of thing. But you put each of them in like blindfolds. And you say like, all right, what height do you think? <laughs> oh, I was gonna go do? and then like, but you don't know how high the other person picked, mm. and so it's like, well, I'm gonna just like play play it safe. I'm gonna say four five, and then the other person's like, oh, man, we're gonna go high. I'm gonna go four nine, and then oh, I was I was gonna go with you take the other twenty one track of and field events. Put them into a hat. <laughs> <laughs> you pull them out, <laughs> and then you compete in that <laughs> event. <laughs> and whoever wins. So we've decided you have to actually do a full decathlon. Yeah. Over the next. You're running days. the 10k, baby. We'll see you in 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> As a field defender, that sounds horrendous. <laughs> we always <laughs> joked in college that if it if, if you have a tie at um uh in a conference championship the head coaches of each team should race <laughs> to see who wins I, I like the idea just more. like add in something else that you there's a very low chance of you doing but you might have to do it uh the chat says that you're correct and you oh good all right yeah i thought and it was we also right, told yeah. the chat that they can just throw in random facts and we'll take them as fact the, yeah and if but the chat says you don't have to impact check so that. far yeah. so they confirmed you don't die of gout yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there was King Henry something something what some number he, he died of gout. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying there was it like wasn't a wasn't a president. It was it was uh, a king. I'm pretty sure. I I did think uh, peek behind the city is social media curtain. I was like, 
typed out God save the king as like the caption for Josh winning. And then I was like, I, I don't know if the official political stance of Sidious <laughs> Mag is monarchism. You know, I haven't run it by, you know, <laughs> we don't want to get controversial. Here. <laughs> you know? It's true. Um, all right. So what else uh, do we have to unpack? Um, okay, uh, unpack it with Jasmine. I have to go finish the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> David's uh, like, I've got to go work. Got Bye, everybody. Right. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, wait, no. You, we, have, we have one more thing that you oh, have to right. talk about. Steeplechase? The women's 400. Oh, women's 400? My a specialty. <laughs> <laughs> um, specialty. No, the question I wanted to float that Kyle's trying to get me to, you know, get in trouble with people. I'm instigating. Uh -oh. um, so <laughs> a, a quick bit of context for the uh, the folks that don't religiously remember every word of every city as preview for the last six months. But I, I said something along the lines of. Uh, Hold that thought. King Henry died of an <laughs> STD, apparently. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought I, I was think. the one who was supposed Thank to you, distract Chad. us. Anyway, <laughs> carry on. Um, at the Paris Diamond League, I said, oh, uh, you know, something along the lines of, like, Paulino's been in good form, but I think Sydney's going to run away with this one. Dominican track Twitter. They got on your head, huh? have it when she beat her at, it was Paris, right? Where Sydney uh, went out really hard and, and faded mm -hmm. a little. And so, you know, I got to, you know, kind of balance things out and come to the defense of, of you know, the, the Dominican track community and say that I don't think we can take for granted that if Sydney, uh, if a healthy Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni is in that race, that she wins. I would have loved to see that race, though. 4876 for a national record. And Sydney was slowly starting to drop her time down and get a little 74. Bit, like, slowly trying to get her rhythm in the 400 because she doesn't necessarily have that yet and I paulino know. you know having like she had some like kind of rocky races in the middle yeah. of the season there and she looked the best she's looked all year through the rounds these, these past couple of days so like again i'm not saying paulino is definitely going to beat sydney if they go head to head today but that but would have been a beautiful i, I don't think you could watch. you could you assume her that her absence means that she would have won Look, absolutely not. making it to the line healthy at the end of the season is part battle. of it it's part of it. it and so like who is to doubt that my lady paulino is not the best 400 meter runner in the world right now i mean she is because she's got yeah. the gold medal. That's it. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, <laughs> like Sydney Olympic gold medal out, favorite. So I don't necessarily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Olympic gold medal <laughs> favorite. Yeah. Oh. I mean, oh. she got oh. world world silver, <laughs> Olympic silver, now a gold. Yeah. I mean, she's got the medals to prove it. I mean, we don't know we'll what Sydney's going to even do, and I feel like I as mean, of right now, I, I'd probably go with Paulino. Also, uh, a. A little lady named Shawnee Miller Weibo had a baby like 20 minutes ago and ran 52. That's, a couple that's days ago. So <laughs> like, <laughs> All right, I don't need the chat on this one. It was four months ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know, I what I do think need to clarify because I don't want to get in trouble. Is that I believe it was King Henry the. Oh eighth. my god. <laughs> Because there are multiple King Henrys. One died of like thyroidism. Another one died of uh, natural causes. Another one tuberculosis. But I, one Chris, of them did. Thank you. No one was dying of old age in the 1500s. Like everyone died of something. What? I said, I'm going to gladly take that information. Listen, I'm going to tell my mom you when I get home. Mag podcast and you're going to get a history lesson. Whether it's track and field history. <laughs> Or world history. I, I would say don't take us as your history lesson. Have a history lesson <laughs> and then decide if we're right or not. Uh, other shout outs in that 400. Second place, Natalia uh, Kasmarek. Yeah. Had a great year. What a she breakout, a breakout year. year. 49.57. And then we had Seda, Seda Williams of Barbados who ran what she ran 49.60. Bronze again. Is... What is the rate? Is there a race that sticks out to you the most women to break 50 seconds? This And this one, we only got three. But, like, this year, the 400 was on fire. Yes. And it just sort of, like, I think why wasn't this? As fast? I looked up the stat. I, th I believe it was, like, six or s six women broke 50 at, like, the Atlanta Olympics. Okay. I looked that up before Monaco this year. Yeah, and I mean, I think see. some of it is just the absence of some folks, you know, Britton Wilson and, and Sydney. And um, I think the other piece of it, uh, you know, shout out to, to our girl, Lika Claver, who 
oh went for it. Oh my gosh, she and, went you know, for it. Can I clarify why she's our girl? If you accept a collab tag <laughs> <laughs> with Sidious Mag on Instagram, There's any then we listening. cheer for you. That's yeah. why it's like the simplest thing. <laughs> yeah. Like If you get back after a race and you check your phone and you see a collab tag and you want Sidious to always cheer for you and send more collab tags... Just, just accept. accept it. And if you accept it and then remove it like three weeks later, we, we notice. We will remember it. We, <laughs> we will grudge we we, I don't think that's a grudge. We'll allow that. Um, but someone also just worth shouting out just as both like an incredible athlete who's had an incredible year, but also like speaking of people, I'm like starting to stand. Rashida Adelaide. Rashida. She seriously, is, dude, she has had such a phenomenal year and, and such a long, long year. season, dude. You came out with a fourth place finish running 50-13. Like, yeah. and also just what? you know talking about getting to the line healthy. You know, uh, that it the sucks that battle. that Britain's had to deal with as much as she had this year. But like being able, you know, and, and speaking to your longevity as a pro, like the fact that she has been competing since January and sixty and then two hundred all sorts of different distances and events, and is still here. You know, that's a great sign of her durability, and also just like. She's so funny. She's a great interview. She's entertaining. Like she's, she's gonna be a great personality. Too, this way. In the, I loved her entrance video. I was like, girl, you better flip that hair. Come on now. <laughs> she uh, she's gonna be one to root for 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 years now to come. We've got Tara Davis in the chat and Hey girl. Tara said, Wish I could have crashed the party in Rome getting Hunter's legs. Uh love y'all. She's one of the people who uh accepts collab tags, so we root for Tara. We love Tara. We will always love Tara because I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> All right. We have a lot of stuff to get through. So let's, let's, David's going to go write the yep. newsletter. We're going to burn that happen. tomorrow morning. <laughs> Sidious Down Under correspondent. <laughs> Mitch, come on over. Mitch, bring oh. it in. We're trading Mitch, out David Mitch, for Mitch. Mitch, Mitch. David and Mitch haven't even met. <laughs> 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 anyway. Um, first off, we got to let him get his two cents in here on, uh, Nina Kennedy winning a gold medal, sharing it with America's Katie Moon. Man. So you were ready to fight us in the mix zone. You're like, I'm coming in hot to the show tonight. It's like, we're, we're, we're doing in the end. We just get to share. Right. We're sharing it. Yeah. That's special. Hi everybody. It? Um, yeah, I thought, I thought she'd won cause I thought countback was still a thing. So we were sort of like going ballistic thinking that that was it. And because the commentator kept saying, oh, they're going to share it. And we we're like, what the fuck? Like she's won, she's won it. Like what's this guy talking about? But no, nah, it's pretty cool. Like obviously like obviously I had to stay around to talk to Nina, but she talked to like every man and his dog by the time she got to me. So she was pretty tired, um, but incredible. Like she just said, they looked at each other. They were both clearly exhausted. Like it was a long competition. It's a hot night. And it was just unanimous. So like, yeah, let's share it. And they had the beautiful like, you know, high jump moment from back in the Olympics. And yeah, it's cool. I mean, I know like the US win a lot of world champs. So it's still significant naturally anytime you win a world championship. But for Australia, like it is Huge. massive, massive news. So I, I imagine like uh, on a count of three, let's both say whether we want to share it or not share it. And it's like one, one two. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> imagine the awkwardness like, let's go. I <laughs> share it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, hats off to them. Like, I don't think every, I mean, probably every athlete would share it, but there'd be a few out there, I reckon, that would roll oh, the dice. Oh, we'd against Jan. Yeah, I'd, oh, I'd yeah. be against it. We're really? going for a jump off. If it's long jump, we're jumping off. Like, no, really? we're not sharing this. I don't care how as tired I As a fan, I, am. I think oh. we should make them jump off, but as an athlete, I would definitely share it. I'd be sharing it for sure. So kind as an Can, athlete. For an American I, audience <laughs> that you've got here, what's Nina's story? Yeah, so she's been in the sport for a long time. She was a really good junior like she went through like that world youth world junior sort of phase and then um didn't take time away from the sport necessarily but naturally had not a regression but sometimes you're just not obviously jumping out of your skin and then you know she's always been really good at commonwealth games she's always been a really good championship performer she came out and she was bronze last year um in Eugene and that was epic like everyone thought wow that's pretty special and like we've had some really talented pole vaulters throughout the years really talented women but I mean Nina's held the world record oh sorry not world record Australian record for two years um she's been really desperate to break it and she's just been nose to the grindstone like she rocks up to all the diamond league she was the diamond league champion last year she's been ticking off all this stuff and this world championship was the pinnacle this was the peak and she's so knockabout like she's just like 
when I swear a lot, but like if we're talking in an interview, it's like it is flying everywhere. <laughs> like it, it is not safe for work sort of stuff. So she's, um, yeah, she's like an Australian sweetheart. Everyone loves her. And like I know it's party time back in Australia. I know her coach, yeah, I was Paul say, Burgess. Yeah, I drink a lot in Australia. You guys know how to turn out. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. We have a fair old nudge at it. Yeah, you're not having, <laughs> you're not having one or two. Like, yeah. It's one or two days later. So it's yeah, a long I, time. I used to train with Ella. So I know oh, you, drinking okay. with Ella, was, uh, it was a time. <laughs> That's a that's a good drinking buddy. Yeah, that's that's a world class drinking buddy. That so no, it would be party time. Like Paul Burgess, a coach. Um, from what I hear, he was beside himself. Like just couldn't believe what had happened. And obviously, we've got Curtis going off tomorrow. He's ranked fifth in the world this year. Um, he donated his way through the qualifying, so cleared everything. And you know, it's got to be hard for them now because they've got to sort of regroup and and get ready for Curtis. But um, yeah, it's massive. We love Nina. Nina's sweetheart of australia and now she's the world champion so everyone's pretty stoked about it so those are all of our finals yeah we have lots of heats we're back on our grind this morning session let's uh let's talk some things from the morning real quick you know 800s a thing mo bedazzled spikes bedazzled spikes dude those are so fire I can't wait. Like, are they going to put those out on the market because how no. much are they going to cost <laughs> no how I asked much her. do you think those spikes would go for I mean, now, if you win a, a world title in them, these are pretty yeah. penny. But I, I, she didn't stop in the mix zone. But when she was walking through, I did just quickly ask a thing like, did you make those or did Nike? And she said, none of the above. So we got to find whoever, whoever this secret it. designer History is, designer, the yeah. Dazzler. Um, but she looked great. Nia Aikens looked excellent Best as well. Best time of the day, 159.19. Um, as planned, she told us on Sidious Mag Live, she shot it straight. I'm not stopping for you. And guess what? <laughs> Did not stop for me. <laughs> Did she give any, any, any wink or anything? I, I don't... Uh, if it was a wink, it was a subtle one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Australia, the third fastest time of the day. Was that uh, Trina Bissett or... Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's had a pretty stellar year. She broke the national record um in london the problem was like last year she's she has a little bit of an issue like she's been tripped over a few times in majors so um anytime she can steer clear of of being out of the the carnage of an 800 everyone's pretty stoked but yeah she's world-class performer so i expect her to be in the final mary mora looked great mm -hmm. uh keely hodgkinson, keely hodgkinson. Great. a rumor of a workout keely hodgkinson did floating around the mix zone I don't know if these splits are correct. I don't know if any of this is correct. Full speculation <laughs> was a 300. It was three by 300 with 70 seconds rest. 39, 46, 38. It, Mitch's eyebrows. So a little 38 on the back end of that. Really? Keely's fit, ready to go. Looked great today. Uh, World Athletics. I always like this stance when World Athletics isn't scared to like lean into the storylines a little. And they... they posted a picture and said the big three and it's fair mary that's fair the thing Achilles, they are yeah. the big three if anyone else besides them break in you know who it might be raven rogers raven's coming around at a good time i'm not ruling out uh halima nakai from yeah uh uganda has been having a really strong season nose to peak at a world championships so overall stack what was the last time in the last time into the, uh, the little queue. The little queue was two flat 36. Unbelievable. Yeah. Two Luisa flat 36. Luisa Poirot from Italy. So yeah, that's uh, crazy. good 800s out there this morning. And then there were the 200s. I was, I'm confused. Like, why did the women have their prelim today? They literally just got done running the 100. Yeah. The I men mean, had point. so much rest. The, the, a lot of this schedule has been in favor of the men, huh? This is like... Uh, dude, y'all, do you guys not like women? What's going on? <laughs> Fix it. But I mean, I've all our favorites made it through. It was a pretty all chalk normal day. I mean, you got three Americans, three Jamaicans, two British, Tulu, and then Adeja, our high schooler, made yeah. it on to the semifinal. Friend of the show. We had a few close calls with people letting up at the line. Oh my god! And you can. I get it. You want to let people know you feel good. Cruise through. First, I don't know why you'd give up a good lane. Don't even do but it. You can set it to cruise control, but they're hitting the brakes. Like it, it's full on brakes at this point, and I'm like, you guys are really cutting it so close to the point that you might not make it to the next round, and you can't afford to do that. Was, Just run through the line. Was Kayla? I know Courtney Lindsay. It was. It scary. was Courtney Lindsay and Kayla White, and 
I don't know if they just felt like maybe the person that was behind them, they had enough distance in between them or what was going on. But Team USA coaches, tell these kids to run through the line. They need to run through the line. Your coaches, tell them to run through the line because there's no reason why that should be happening. I'm sorry. No, I, I, to all the coaches listening. Like, they just <laughs> <yell at. laughs> Uh, this is why I'm not a college coach. I'd be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always curious how people who just come off a medal, let alone a win, like Shakari and Noah, can rebound so quickly and line up again. Because I couldn't sleep after Shakari won the other day. So how did she sleep the other day? She probably didn't, to be honest. I feel like that adrenaline rush for anybody competing those days after trying to go to sleep and especially sometimes they're taking you know pre-workout stuff that amps them up they're having a red bull maybe they're having some type of caffeine to get them going hey, uh, olipop uh, vintage cola has caffeine or but yeah. you can't get that out of here so you had to but there's pack no olipop own, so you know right? pack your own <laughs> smuggle it in it's fine uh, <laughs> I brought one into the stadium. That was a good plug. No, I, I good brought job. one into the stadium the other day. Uh, <laughs> but no one stopped me. I think that it it's very difficult overall just to kind of sit back, relax, go to sleep. But thankfully, um, I mean, the boys had a little bit more time. Um, I don't know how she carries holding up, but she looked the frick good out there, okay? I mean, her and Gabby came in with the top two times, so. Uh chat is discussing is there reason to be concerned about someone like andre de the olympic champion or you Dude. had a tweet more about like hey he, it's championship season it's championship season and andre does know how to show up during a championship i mean he survived and advanced so that's one thing that i probably i won't count it out i wouldn't be surprised if he smuggled his way into the final because it's Andre de Grasse. But to win, I feel I like... I didn't say to win. I know. I didn't say that. I but when you're the Olympic that. champion... <laughs> I didn't say That's kind that. of the expectation. Like because, getting, I mean, I, I just cannot go against Noah right now. Like, no, 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 no. You can't. No. That's nah. Dumb. <laughs> nah. No one I'm, can. I will not go against Noah. Andre, I hope you come out with the bronze, maybe. I don't even know. I really want us to, like, sweep. Yeah, Joe Fambule, I want it to medal. Area. You know, it's a lot of other people, but Noah for gold. So 200 is great. We're loving it. Uh, but Mitch, what happened to the Javelin today? Because you guys were on pins and needles. Yeah, we were shitting ourselves for sure. And an A6 athlete. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, Kelsey, she's had a hard year for sure. Um, it, and I think she would be the first one to tell you that it hasn't probably gone to plan. But she's a fighter. She's a scrapper. Like, you don't win two world championships without – you know, being a fighter. And yeah, she obviously didn't quite get it right. I think, you know, she was sort of saying afterwards she came into it maybe a little bit too loose, like probably wasn't quite mechanically where she wanted to be. But, um, you know, she was fully thinking that it was done. It was over. Like she wasn't going to go through to that final. I remember we said to her like, oh, you never know. And I think the the notion was, nah, it's all over. And yeah, thankfully she got through and we have three Australians. We have three Australian women in the final for – the first time ever um and three women who can you know come home with a gold like it's it's a pretty exciting time for us so glad you're here yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a in fairness that's the most attention we have probably given the javelin since Kara winger i was honestly i was like <laughs> i'm glad somebody watched the jav because i was not there for jav i got there super late for jav and they were pretty much ending by the time i got there to give yeah. field events more love men's long jump is shaping up to be dude really dude. really good do you want to break this down for us wayne pinnock just decided you know first attempt i'm gonna come out here and jump at 850 what four 854 like yeah. dude what caitlin was like did you see it and i was like girl i was in the stands did i see it absolutely i'm sitting there watching this happen in my face like First attempt, he looked good, super easy. He kind of looked shocked that he jumped that far, but you could tell he's feeling good. Um, I mean, our guys kind of, the Americans struggled a little bit, but both Jamaicans made it on through. And so I'm excited to watch this competition. I think that we're going to see something very spectacular play out in the men's long jump. I mean, so you got Wayne Pinnock, world lead. Then you've got the defending world champion from China, Jinan Wang, and then the Olympic champion, Metaldis Tentaglu, as... Three guys just like 
the top three that you'd maybe have expected and all there was in the only same four group, auto cues too and those were three of the four yeah so mm. this is this is definitely and again we've said this the hungarians love the field events yeah. yes. they really are kind of carrying the, the oh, championships yeah. in many ways and there uh, much is always made of what do you do between races like you know, there's too much time between races and they got to set up those hurdles quicker. So we can get to the next race here. It's take your time. Like, yeah. we right. love the We're good. Event. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. chill. Yeah. yeah. I love this. I'm kind of having FOMO. I was actually just texting Kimmy Williams, who is a triple jumper who made it. She got a big cue. We'll talk about that in a second, but I was texting her like, dude, I'm honestly having FOMO. Like you guys are getting so much love out there. The fact that they're paying attention, you're getting these claps and, even when you guys, they're doing the what we call organ clap out in America because they start mm -hmm. clapping really fast. Well, this is Track Town USA. I mean, it, it only makes sense. <laughs> so they're they're following along with that clap, but they're very good at following when the athletes are like, "No, let's slow this down." And you know, Eugene's not great at that. Sometimes they just be like, "Yeah, forget your clap. We're gonna go fast." <laughs> so, so two events left that I really want to touch on really quickly: the the women's steeple chase. Oh yeah. Uh, Courtney Wayman made it through no problem. Only American to advance. Heartbreaking. He's hearing from Emma Coburn afterwards. And you knew something was wrong because it wasn't like she just narrowly missed. There wasn't a fall. You don't like a previous world champion and 10 time U.S. champion doesn't run 941 on an even a bad day. So clearly something had been bothering her. And it turns out it's been a hamstring issue. Her coach actually said, her coach slash husband said, I don't think we should go to Worlds. Mm. And Emma, being stubborn, her words, not mine, <laughs> um, said, like, I want to go represent my country. This is what I do for a living. This is what I love to do. So she came out. And even Can you do that you, in her voice? I want to hear you mimic <laughs> no, it. I yeah. already called her stubborn. <laughs> um, and uh, decided to still come out. And it wasn't her day, but it was a very, you know, emotional interview afterwards and everything. Uh, so only one from the U S I don't know. It's just, yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you do? Go Courtney, go Courtney. Uh, Courtney made a final last year. So like she's been in this spot before. Uh, I think, you know, she's peaking at the right time working. She believes she's fitter than she was the year before. I had a brief conversation with her. Um, coach Dilji Taylor, drawn up the plan we trust in diljeet um so yeah i mean we'll see what how it shakes out but it's not gonna be easy <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying might have to set an american yeah. record too <laughs> well yeah because I, i'm looking at the top times and like the kenyans ever since i mean the, the reason why we're so bummed about Emma is she's a game changer. Yeah. Like the win in 2017 totally shifted how this event they know, has been run. It's going to go it, fast. It's going to go fast. And so you've got the likes of Jack Line Chepkowicz, uh, Beatrice Chepkowicz, like Faith Cherotic, uh, Peruth Chamutai from Ethiopia. So, eh, yeah. It'll be, it'll be wide open with many women capable of running fast. But I do now want to just transition to the, the, our final event, the 5,000. Wait, can I, like, touch yeah, on the triple quick really quick? Yeah, oh, what did I forget? I didn't really touch on it. The triple jump. <laughs> oh, I totally... I only mentioned Kimmy, but, like, Kimmy's not the person we should be talking about in triple jump. Sorry, Kimmy. No offense to that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wow. love you. I'm so sorry, but Damn, I am going to talk about you. We are alive. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a drive-by. <laughs> like... Bang. Kimmy, I'm so proud of you, and she knows Shit. that. But, I mean... When it came to the triple jump, Rojas went out there, first attempt, and she got her big qualifier. Then you have Thea LaFord, who went out there and actually set a national record in the midst of all that. So I'm really excited to watch how this plays out for the finals because these girls are out here jumping. Um, 1462 for Thea LaFord. Raquettes came out with a big Q for her, so big Q queen and a first jump and a 1467, which was a season's best. And why I had mentioned Kimmy earlier is because Kimmy has been injured all season and has been struggling. She came out here on her first jump. I mean, she hasn't been like able to actually train and stuff. Her ankle's been messed up. Went out there first jump and 
got that big cue and I was like, okay, season's best girl. And that's all I have for you, Kimmy. I love you. So don't take that the hard way. Okay. <laughs> Bye guys. You guys could go on. To don't your, be surprised if you guys aren't cool events. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Kimmy can't come to the phone right now. <laughs> I already told her that I'm making a shirt that's half Jamaican and half American. So she has to love me. It's fine. All right. <laughs> oh, there's two events. We didn't say anything about Kenny Harrison just running oh, twelve three yeah. and looking insanely good again. Yeah, and also <laughs> yeah. Wait, didn't somebody say they were concerned? I was. about her. I'm all that Chris? concern is gone. I'm rooting so hard for yeah. Kenny after uh-huh. this one. Um, so <laughs> what happened was? <laughs> Wait, let me explain. <laughs> I mean, I I'm eating my words. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what did she run? I, I, I'm having trouble with the twelve three something, but twelve thirty three. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so she ran that. It was impressive. She shocked a lot. Of, not shocked a lot of people, but it was a bomb that was dropped in the semifinals. And then from there, was very excited by the time. And she's coming through the mix zone. <laughs> Kyle and I were looking at each other. He's like, she's not gonna stop. Like she's, <laughs> she, she looks very serious. <laughs> And, and she and just had walk. This is she's walking Kenny like, Harrison just walking through, and no one had stopped her the what? whole time. Yeah, and so then like we're like we should shoot our shot. Try, I mean, <laughs> as well. And Kenny, it was like, Kenny, you got a second? And she's like, Yeah. And then like, <laughs> all you have to do is ask. And so uh, I was just like, Why? Why are you so zen right now? It's like you just threw down a, a pretty fast time, and it's like you have a reaction when you see the clock. And I guess you have a four minute walk to get all the way in front of me. <laughs> like, what are you thinking this entire time? And so it was a great interview. Uh, you can check it out on the City of Mac, uh, City of Mag YouTube channel. We've got tons of interviews there. But uh, she's my pick to win uh, gold. Same. She looks so freaking good. I mean, she's so relaxed going over those hurdles. And I don't know. She might pop out and accidentally break the world record. I, I wouldn't put it past uh, put it past her and. Australia didn't have a good day in this event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Chris. <laughs> Ouch. Jeez. I'm just oh, sorry. we did all right. We tried our best. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> damn. We can't, we can't have world record holders just roaming around all the time. <laughs> <laughs> a smaller country, Chris. <laughs> Jeez. I've been kind of meaning to ask. It's sort of like... It's technically does this, bigger. Does this get annoying to someone like you? Just sort of like all us? Just yeah. Like, we're winning so much. I love winning. Yeah. No, it does. Yeah, 100%. Are you, are you excited for Liz? Like, she's been in form. Is she coming back? Do you know? Uh, I mean, she came over to Europe, I know. And then, like, I mean, it was a pretty bad break, what she had last year. Yeah. So it had to take a lot of time to recover from. Um, I think she's definitely on the mend like she's definitely somebody who thinks long term like I don't really know Liz to be honest with you but from what I know of people in her camp like she's really switched on so I know next year will be a huge year for her and I mean like yeah it is annoying hearing how (laughs) well the Americans do but (laughs) only in terms of just like you guys seem to you know what I'm sick of and this is gonna (laughs) go down like a lead balloon but if I have to walk into that stadium one more time and hear that American anthem I'm gonna throw up (laughs) I'm I'm so over it (laughs) But, like, for us, it is a hard team to make. Like, we've got three strong women, um, and or four or five strong women. So the three that we had here, like Hannah Jones, for us, I think is a cool story, 27-year-old debutante, but didn't get it out of the rounds, but amazing to get over here. So, I mean, Liz is going to have to work to get in that team. Um, Absolutely. She'll come back and do something pretty special. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we had Michelle and Celeste in there today. Like, Michelle's been here five times now as a fifth semifinal. Um Gave it everything she had. She just, again, just couldn't quite get it moving. I think her start maybe was a little bit slow and, and same as Celeste. But, you know, they're really positive. They're really upbeat. I think that's the thing for us. Like, it's our metric is, is it's not that it's lower, but because we don't have as many world champs like Sally, the last one for us, superstar. But, um, yeah, we just want to see people best and get a personal best and they they went close so um chris they actually did they actually did well i thought they did well so yeah (laughs) we had a good interview i thought but i'm gonna go reassess you have kenny nia lee and then i guess your picks would be anyone else probably jasmine camacho quinn and toby amison no, I would again. I don't hate America, but I, I like. I I think like she was phenomenal. I think we were standing next to each other when she ran that time, and it was like holy shit! Like no one, if she goes clean over those hurdles, you're right. Like that world record could seriously be in jeopardy. 
Oh, yeah, that's the one thing that she told me. She clipped two hurdles today. Yeah. That's scary. No big deal. <laughs> Just casually clipped two hurdles, but she has time to go back, fix it, and get her little self together. I'm excited to watch her go. I mean, also, Nia sneaking in there. It was a tight race for that heat. So I was really happy to see Nia's name pop up there. Long day at the track for those kids. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, 5,000. Um, and I'm out of here, guys. It was good talking to you. Yeah, okay. well, bye. Good to things. see you again. I want to quick, uh, after this, yeah, go on with the 5,000. All right, 5,000. First heat. We're now in the, the 5,000 is the race that needed the big cues more than anyone, mm. right? So now it's just top eight in both. I'm going to butcher this the way I say agate, kun, kun, kun. Don't look at me like I know. Kun, I got no kun, idea. Kun. <laughs> see, kun from Latvia, 19 year old. Comes into the year a fifteen forty three personal best, all the way down to fifteen oh three solo at U twenty Euros. Did it by herself. Comes out. The race was moved to the afternoon because it was so damn hot today. Mm. So what does she do? She's like, I'm just gonna go out and I'm gonna run a personal best of fifteen flat all by myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, no one respected her move at all in the beginning. And with a lap to go, it became very questionable of whether or not she was going to make it because they were closing super, super hard on her. And she fought. Like, she responded. She just had to hold on. She couldn't let eight women pass her. And what would she end up finishing? Fifth? Fourth? Fourth, Fourth. I think. It was yeah. Beatrice Jabed, Kudos the guy, and Margaret Kikpemue, who, like, heavy hitters. And then the 19-year-old yeah. from Latvia, the only distance runner here from Latvia, did it the hard way. I mean... Everyone is a fan now of yeah. Agate. I got a gate. She's going to... Agate. The crowd is going to be <laughs> wild for yeah. her at the road racing championship. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so just ahead of Elise Cranny and Alicia Monson who advance. I mean, in the, be oh, in the beginning, are you not seeing a first-timer, a, a teenager at the world champs go out hauling ass and just being like... Hey, rookie mistake. Nah. You're going to learn real fast not to do this in the future. I like it, man. It plays on what we were talking about yesterday where it was like there's too much respect for the best. And she just went, well, I kind of liked it because uh, like we had an Australian try and go with her, but she just missed the move and, and she did pay for it. But I have enormous respect for someone who goes, okay, well, I don't have the kick. I don't have the credentials. I don't have what they have. So why not run the only way that I... I'm probably going to get into this final and ball out. And you could see the crowd. You're right. Like people were on their feet with 400 meters to go, like doing mental math, looking, being like, holy shit, is she going to get there? And Calculators you're like, yeah, you're, literally, you're even forgetting that the, like, the might of East Africa is coming and <laughs> she's just out there by herself. And everyone's like, it was like watching an adopted daughter. Like they were loving her. And like, that's what the world champs needs. Yeah. I think, I th and I think those storylines are so important and it paid off. Like that's the best thing. And no one's walking away being like, ah, so close. It's and like, for all yeah, we she know, did it. Latvia like might be near Hungary. Yeah. <laughs> Mac, can you pull up a map? <laughs> See where Latvia could is? be a national <laughs> holiday in Latvia tomorrow, yeah. man. It could be a huge deal. All right. Then the second heat. Safana San's fifth race. Why is she doing this? She's uh <laughs> she goes out in four forty for the first mile and just decide again, hot out. Apparently was doing threshold work after yeah, the fifteen hundred. No way, really. So that's disgusting. She said, "Because <laughs> she's training." You don't have to have the perfect quote. She was training for Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's basically the idea, right? Yeah, and then like you know, Cathal Dennehy tweeted out the workout, and she was like, "Yeah, I I did that. I've got Chicago in six weeks. I have to train." And then she said. They're, you guys are making a bigger deal than it is. <laughs> Who trains through the world <laughs> championship? That's the, that's the craziest part. Um, the reason why I think there's pride on the line in this race. Oh, well, because then what ended up happening, Mac, I don't know if you want to sound off on this. I know that you get real heated about this last hundred. What, what was that heat? <laughs> I don't I don't understand. <laughs> like, even Mac, if you are the best in the world, I don't understand why you're running so hard in a prelim. It's Especially over the last 400 meters. That, um, who was it that fell? It was uh, like... Oh, Lillian yeah. and Gurick. Yeah, she, they, like, they're, they're tripping over each other with 100 meters to go. And it's like, you guys are literally 75 meters clear of seventh <laughs> place. Like, you're, you're fine. You're, you're okay. You can just jog it in. 
Yeah. It, so Stefano Tani ended up explaining that it was just like, I look up to faith. I want to be faith. And it's like, but you should hold on to You should be in the, yeah. in the final. Maybe the final, yeah. Why, yeah. why aren't you doing that in the final? I don't, like, if, if she ends up getting out kicked in over the last 400 meters in the final, it, it's impossible to not be like, well, maybe you should have just run 40 seconds slower <laughs> yeah. in the prelim. I don't know. If you're the coach and your athlete just walks off the track running the most unnecessary 1432 with a kick possible, <laughs> are you like, Yo, that was sick. <laughs> 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 or you're like, why did you do that? Like, it already happens. So yeah. You kind of have to play it cool, right? Like, at this point, it's not worth yelling or being like making a big deal of it. You got to pretend that that was a smart thing to do. Only, yeah. only Tim Rober knows the answer to yeah. that question. Um, yeah, this one. So the slowest person to get in from this was if you go down, like there was two. Two national records set in this one. The Japanese national record, Nozomi Tanaka, breaks it running 14.37. Laura Galvin lowers her 5K national record, 14.43. Uh, 14.43 was the s- slowest time of this section to make it, Where, whereas Natasha Rogers finishes a spot out from making it to the next round, to the final. Natasha Rogers, quite a bit disappointed afterwards, rightfully so, and then... Said then, what's what's next after this? She's going to start uh, training to snag a half marathon qualifier to then run the U.S. Olympic marathon trials in February. Kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> Jess Hall also was in this one. She was, yeah, and she was she was pretty gassed. I mean, she said that afterwards. That, like, and I spoke about it yesterday. She's just a competitor. She just said like she would have hated sitting on the sidelines and watching it, and and no, like not knowing whether she would have made it through. Like, I think she ran fifteen. I'm going to say 15 15. Um, and like she's a far more capable runner than that. Like she's our national record holder in the 1440s. But um, yeah, big schedule for her. That was her fourth race as well. Um, and yeah, like she's just, a, she's just a hard trainer. She's a hard nut. She's a bit of a psycho. So I, I kind of. I kind of like the fact that she ran because, again, a lot of people would opt out and just I be would like, opt out. yeah, I'd naturally, 100%. you'd probably just be like, nah, like. No, thank you. you I'm not the, doing I that. I got the gear. You sent it all to my house. I yeah. got the <laughs> yeah. trip to Budapest. Well, that's I it, guys. Event. Yeah. Like, I'm good. I'm out of here. I'm going to go to the thermal bars. But <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, hats off to her. Like, she she ran it. She did her best. What I respect was, the hell out of it. What was your impression of the thermal baths? Because we... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Because everyone who I told, like, oh, I'm going to Budapest for World Champs is like, well, you got to check out mm. the thermal baths. And I walked in... And I was like, this is just fancy regular pool. No, but you <laughs> you went to the poor man's thermal bath. You didn't go to the, the the big dog thermal bath up the road, like the the scenic one, the postcard one, did you? The one with the, the starts with the S? I'm yeah, I, c- I can't it. say it. Yeah. Neither. It's a bit of a trek though. Did, where did you guys go? We went to the one right across the bridge from us. Oh, yeah. So that's poor man's one. You got to go to the, <laughs> you got to go to the proper one. That's I life changing. I felt like. Life change. What did I'm, you feel? It's a, you just go swimming. No, you don't. That's a, that's so naive. You just you get in there, right? And you're like you, you geese <laughs> around. Americans. You're taking it in. You're like, fuck, this is amazing. And then, all, like, I didn't know how hot it was going to be because I knew it was like thermal, so it's warm. <laughs> and then it's it's pretty hot. And I'm like, okay, it's just like me in a bath with a whole bunch of randoms. Is that what I first felt? And then I just started floating, man. And then I was I was it was an out of body experience. I was just I was just guided around the thermal bath it was amazing i, I would recommend we, you'd feel so much better i guarantee you. they call that a lazy river in, in the united yeah. states or i think the, we the, spent the more JCC. time yeah. Yeah. i think we uh we spent more time at the bar next to the bath <laughs> than <laughs> actually in we the did. bath it's a better option yeah. Yeah. all right so events for tomorrow what are you looking forward to the most mitch I could not even tell you what's on tomorrow, man. My my we my really brain is mush, dude. I, I've got I've got right. no idea. I got him. Yeah, please get it up for me. All right, we've got the men's long jump, the women's hammer throw, <laughs> the women's one hundred meter hurdles, the men's oh. four hundred meters, and the women's four hundred meter hurdles, and also the semis of the two two hundred. Are are you going to the thirty five k race walk? Yeah, bloody oath I am. We got a few. We we got good race walk history in Australia, so yeah, I'll be there for sure. I mean, I, I don't think we're a medal chance like we saw Jemima 
um, one tag do the other day, but I'll be there without a doubt. Most It'll, race walk coverage. It's actually sick. Like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put it out because it never gets any attention. The race walk is where it's at. I seriously, I will, I will sit there giddy for like two hours, loving it. What? what? <laughs> It's have you been? It's magic, dude. I'm telling you, I, it's, I love the it. Whole, the the Look, sidious man group run is at 8 a.m. The race walk starts at 7. <laughs> That's gonna be a hard thing to do, but I believe in myself. <laughs> I'll come back, I'll come back, do the run, and then by the time the run's done, I'll run back over to the walk. I'll be in both places. I believe in myself. We were hoping Sidious Mag would be open to a whole new demographic down under, but now, no, I'll still, I'll, then I'll still come, but I'll go to the race walk first yeah. and then I'll come back and then. Well, provided like the scooters are working because the scooter I had on the way here shit itself with like a K left. So I was, I had to run here from- Again? Well, yeah, but I had the backpack on this time and I'm sweating up a storm. I'm stinking my way up the path. Is, is it, you oh, in the slides, yeah. Show, Actually, show check the these out because uh, Kyle Asics. didn't get these because he didn't win his heat in the Meteor 800, but <laughs> this is what they Asics, gave you for winning. Yeah, yeah from Asics. Asics. That down under but you, know, you guys say it how you want but uh yeah i'll be there i'll be there in the morning but the walk is sick i recommend everybody getting down to the race walk it's gonna be magic all right and then we'll be back on the air for sidious mag live at worlds we'll start at around 8 a.m eastern time i'm pretty sure um we're sh like it's starting to get to the point where people are done totally and they're like when are you gonna have me and i was like all right, great. <laughs> so we're going to have Freddie Crittenden from Team USA. Fourth. With fourth in the men's 110 hurdles. We're going to have world championship silver medalist Valerie Allman from the discus. We're going to have, uh, potentially we're waiting on a little bit of confirmation here, uh, Yared Nagus. Now we said it, so he has to come. Yeah. <laughs> it's out there now. And then fourth... Also, finalizing confirmation, uh, Kira McGinn might be showing up as well. Great. Another so, great afternoon. Another great afternoon of just a bunch of people talking about the greatest sport in the world, track and field. I love it. How do you feel about it? Track and field? Big fan. <laughs> big, big fan. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> what else can I say about it? Big fan. You said you got Valerie Ullman coming in. You should get a coach to come. He's, he's coming as he well. He is? Yeah a big dude <laughs> he's a big you know his name yeah that's the best zebulon. name zebulon zion that is the best name i've ever heard in my life he was a coach at wake when i was there actually so um he's a scary dude he'll intimidate you guys <laughs> i i had a great interaction with him when mac and i visited him in austin like, really super nice guy yeah so i mean that's the thing about he was actually sometimes. intimidated by chris really yeah i get i was too <laughs> All right, everyone. On that <laughs> note, I like that note. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Check out all the interviews from the Mix Zone. Caitlin Hutchison, who is here, was working so hard. We got to give her some flowers. Like she's been staying back to get us some interviews. Caitlin, I don't know if you want to take a minute here just to say anything you want into the mic because the people have missed you on the podcast. I love track and field. There we go. Nice. Thank that is the perfect way to end it. Oh, wait, I don't want to break it. <laughs> All right, Caitlin. Well, so do you want to give us a quick mix over? What happened out there? It's, it's, it's very hot and sweaty and nasty down there. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> the way that I literally feel like I just came out of a sauna with a bunch of unwanted. Wait till you hit the thermal baths and you're going to feel the same way. Mm, I'm not ready. But yeah, I don't know. It's been crazy down there, but it's low-key been a lot of fun. I think y'all been loving the interviews that's been going up on Twitter, YouTube, you know, Instagram. Y'all a little mean. Y'all going to need to calm it down. But, <laughs> you know, besides TikTok that. TikTok loves you. Yeah, huh? TikTok loves you. TikTok loves me, though. Shout out to all the aunties and uncles that's been riding for me on TikTok. Love y'all real bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's low-key been fun, like, being able to talk to the athletes and stuff like after they've been done competing i think it's just you know i know them a lot more now so like seeing when they like get fourth place or when they actually get first or like all this other stuff it's been a great time so y'all better appreciate me because the past two days i ain't went to sleep until 3 a.m so. <laughs> wait mm -hmm. i guess real quick the people want to know like what did, what did the 1500 guys say the what did jacob say okay what did jacob say he was sick, i gotta apparently. remember he was sick 
Yeah. I don't remember him talking about being sick. Um, that's what people are posting on Twitter. Is saying like, I know what Josh something. Kerr said. Yeah, tell mm-hmm. us what Josh Kerr said. Jo- talking to Josh was like a lot of fun. Um, I tried to talk to him the first time, but then it was a lot of people. So then I tried to talk to him afterwards, and I was like, so y'all must be trying to start a war with Norway because there's no <laughs> way that y'all just did the same thing to Jakob twice and not expect them to try to like you know invade y'all country. But then I also found out that like Norway and Scotland went to war before, and like isn't Josh Kerr technically Scotland? Or they, yeah. they train with the yep. sky. I don't know. All I know is that if y'all see something happening in the news about World War Three, <laughs> it's probably because of these two. Um, but he was just saying that he was really excited. Um, he was joking. He was like, well, you know, like I'm a jealous man. And like I saw that Jake had the medal and I had to go get my own. And so that was really cool to talk to him about. Um, and just overall that he was glad to be able to bring the gold medal back home to Great Britain. Um, Max, pull up a map. Where's Great Britain? <laughs> No map. No map. map. We know where it is. (laughs) I don't. Anyway, um, I don't know. Is there anything else that was super interesting? Carson or Rye? Um, Carson was really fun to talk to. I tried to get him to like do like his celebration in front of me, and he was like, "You can't put me on the spot like that." I'm like really introverted, and he like walked away. <laughs> I was like, I was so sorry. No, he was laughing. It was just like, eh, "Girl, I know you like that." Um, but then I think he said to somebody else after because it somebody came back to me it was like, "Well, he said if you catch him at like a different time when he's like a." I don't know like he he might be more comfortable with doing it so that was really funny but he was talking about his relationship with his coach a lot too he's like y'all know y'all be seeing my coach and me and him we tight like this um and then just essentially that um he knew he could come out here and win and him and his coach or him and somebody else on his team was talking about like the hardest part about doing all this is repeating it he's like well I've repeated it multiple times so I guess it's not that bad no more <laughs> and I was like look at you just snagging all the gold medals and then he was just excited to you know essentially like get back on the podium after like having his injury and then not doing so hot in the finals um at worlds last year so yeah pretty cool dude all right awesome well we'll watch all that on the city smack youtube channel yeah thanks everyone for tuning in have a wonderful day in america and we're going to bed here in budapest we gotta rest up we got more i love it love it Today's workout is what we call a marathon concentration run. It's something that we came up with uh, a couple seasons ago. He was training for a marathon and it's a series of three runs starting at an hour and a half, hour 45, and then finishing about three weeks out from the marathon with a two hour run. And we're doing it here at at 7,000 feet in Mammoth. So we come down from town, do it down here at a little bit lower elevation and we try and hold, Nico tries and hold about 525 pace to 530 pace for this run, which is about 25, 30 seconds slower than his gold marathon race pace at sea level. And it's basically just a run to mentally concentrate for that amount of time. And it's not, it's, it becomes a harder effort towards the end of the run, obviously. But we start right here at our track and we go, well, today he's gonna go 52 and a half minutes out and try to come back in 52 and a half minutes to make an hour 45. So like I said, this is the, the second uh, workout in the series and his, uh, his last two hour run will be, I think, 22 days before Budapest. Honestly, I don't still think I fathom it that what I did in 2019 to turn down that team. All I knew was that I was on this course and of running the 2020 Olympic trials and that was the eggs in the basket, like all my eggs in the basket. And so when Andrew sat me down and talked, he also made, like he ultimately made it my decision. Um, but I definitely like, you know, you don't live with any regrets, but man, I'm like, I should have done that. 
but it was all eyes on the trials and especially because I finally had a breakout race in Houston that put me in an area where I thought top 10 at the 2020 trials and then just work from there because I know 2024 is it. Um, so I think bigger, bigger picture, you know, it was like five plus years later. So in your, in a way, like they've implemented me on that path and I wanted to do that path too because it's so easy to just chase money and accolades and that's not what it's, it's not, for me, it's not what it's about. Um, so, but yeah, I still to this day, like I don't realize what I declined. So to run this one is like trying to make up, if you will, for that one as well. I learned from Coach V. Hill uh, when he took on Dina back in 1996. He had a long-term approach with her. It was a four-year approach to the 2000 Sydney Games from from the Atlanta Games. Um, Dina moved to, to Alamosa and was was under was under V. Hill that whole time. And he took a really conservative, methodical approach to adding in mileage and training. And I did the exact same thing, learning from him. Uh, exact same thing with Nico when he first came here. He wasn't running high mileage. He was running 90, 95 miles, maybe 100. And over the last three or four or five years, I've really incrementally increased his volume just methodically and slowly and um, where he's running his biggest miles he's ever done now. Uh, he's, never, he's never touched the 130s uh, in this time here. And uh, it's taken five years to get there, but it was I think it was a really smart, uh, approach to a very patient approach because he said oh you know coach I want to be I want to be doing this when I'm 35 I'm like well you're 25 now so we got we got 10 years to work so we're gonna do this the right way and and I and I told him at the beginning of, of this season right after he finished Boston I said now is the time to put in those big miles you haven't done it I've been holding you back let's see what the 130 mile weeks do for you going into the trials, um, going into now Budapest, of course. I always think about like other people when I'm doing stuff, which I probably should think about myself a little bit more too. Um, but no, I, I think like it puts like a, I'm in a really happy place to know that like people have invested in me and I can hopefully like return that investment. No matter what place I get, right? I, I wanna do well and I wanna place well and I wanna earn money and all that stuff, but um, more so like making them proud for sure. It's, this is a really, really great opportunity to, to either one, run fast or, or improve his world rankings going into the trials, I think is very important. And having it be an August marathon, it gives him plenty of time to take those rest breaks like I was talking about, take two weeks completely off or three weeks completely off, go get lost, I don't wanna see him for three weeks, go have fun with your buddies in Arizona or Florida, wherever you wanna be and then come back and then it's this game on until February 3rd. Anytime we go out to like dinners at the casters, 
we're always talking about like who did what or and not not so much in the sense that like can I beat that time or that workout but you know every time I, I, I have a story for Andrew he has a story for me about someone else who's already done it did that is continuing to do it so yeah like you said that knowledge of just like there's nothing I can say that he he's not going to come back with and it's like a really cool story you know about Meb and Ryan and Dina and like all their failures too um he talked about like Dina trying to balance a track life and a marathon like and how that didn't work out and did work out for the best and I was like wow I don't really want to get caught up in that that's great to know or chasing the money for example because that's so easy to do in our sport and you know we all need it right we all need the cash flow um but to not necessarily you know because he, he's told me so many stories on how that's derailed athletes I just feel like I have a I have good knowledge of of how to train athletes in mammoth I mean you, you put me in Gainesville Florida or something I don't know what the heck I'm doing you know but but navigating the, the different weather patterns and and cycling through different systems of, of uphill threshold work and track work and um, road work down in Bishop at 4,300 feet, you know, what times means what, you know, for, for races and prep and all that. I just feel like I have, I have a, a good baseline of knowledge and, and experience to be able to pass along to excited athletes who, who want to get the best out of themselves. And, and, and that's, that's really the reason why uh, Dina and I took over the club. You know, we want to be able to give back to the sport in which the sport has given us so much. Um, it's given us a place to live. It's given us uh, friendships from all around the world. And we want to be able to pass that along to, to young athletes coming up here that, that want to make teams and they want to go to the world championships and they want to go to world cross and they, they, you know, they want to go to make their, make their Olympic team, whether it's for the U S or, or their national team or whatever. And we just want to be able to give back to those athletes. And if we can do, if we can make a living doing it, then that's, that's fantastic. So it kind of fills, kind of fills that special spot um, in the soul to, to be able to give back and, and to, to guide and mentor. Made it back. That was the goal. Yeah. Look at that. Good timing. Look at that. Now I'm gonna go like a mile. This is the hardest part of this workout. Is the call down. Compared to my uh, quads, I'm cold out. Back though. Because you know, like five five twenty pace is like okay, and then like eight minute pace is like oh no. <laughs> Going a little quick on those downhills is like god damn. I'm gonna pay for these. So pushing from 8 to 9 and 9 to 10, that was definitely hard. Um, I knew I want to be tough up the hills. I know like 
That makes me a stronger runner. Tell me every time I do that, not to drop you or to look good, but I just like, I need to get up to this hill already. It's kind of, it's getting annoying. I'll put, a, I'll put a surge on Cam Obor. Yeah, right, he's gonna put a surge on me. Such a flex. He's like, I'm not going yet. I would say the hardest was definitely that last climb, uh, that last hill. It was pretty strenuous. Uh, I was just trying to remember, like, there was a voice in my head, like, oh, we can chill, we have cushion, you know, we're gonna make it back to the track just fine, but that's my comfortable kind of voice. So I figured I, I wanted to push and push past that voice. So once I got past that and past that hill, I felt much better about myself and what I was doing. So, um, but overall, I felt really good. Uh, I felt in control, um, very uh, attentive. So I, it's one of my better workouts for sure.